Okay, guys, so really, really big news about the Saw franchise today. Reported by Deadline this morning, I've been sitting on this all morning. I don't really know what to do with it. I don't really know what to think about it. In fact, before we get into this video, I just want to say I'll probably do a live stream later tonight. Just place it out there just because I want to talk to you guys about this. I want to get the idea of like what the fans think about this and just everything in general. We might even have a roundtable discussion if I can get more people into that discussion and really talk this through. But... With everything being said, let's just jump right into the news. And hey, YouTubers, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload. All right, guys, a lot of surprising news, a lot of not very surprising news, and just a lot of stuff to unpack here. Deadline is reporting that none other than Chris Rock is going to be teaming up with Lionsgate and Twisted Pictures to reimagine the Saw franchise. Now, they're not really telling us a whole lot what reimagine means, whether this is a reboot, whether it's kind of a spinoff. We'll get to that just in a bit. But we do know that October 23rd, 2020 is going to be the release date. If you've been watching my videos, especially the newer Saul videos, I've been saying for a while now that that seems to be what they were shooting for. I mean, obviously, they weren't going to make 2019. That was pretty clear. Not only in 2019, as soon as we got into this year, but also, it felt like they weren't going to be able to make this year back in 2018 when we got word that Josh and Pete were going to come back to write the next Saul film. So, what does this mean? How is this all going to play out? I'm not really sure, but it is kind of nice to see that the Saul franchise is taking a major step forward. And they're also taking a huge hint from the Final Destination films that frequently did the whole three years between film things for a long time. It was very successful for that franchise. And if you're going to be talking about a horror movie related concept that is as close to Saul as possible without being Saul, I feel like Final Destination was the right pick for them in terms of trying to replicate that franchise success because new original interesting ways for people to die in every single movie that has absolutely no bearing other than maybe just a handful of characters between sequels was one of the reasons there was a huge driving force between those two franchises and the fan base. You didn't have someone like Michael Myers or Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees in every single film killing people almost in the exact same way. Yes, it's interesting, it's fun to watch, but after a while, especially once you get into 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 movies, it gets a little bit old. Speaking of those icons in the horror genre and what's been going on with these horror movie franchises as of late, there is a lot to unpack here and a lot to be excited about and a lot to be worried about when we're talking about Chris Rock. But before we do that, I just want to reiterate that yes, it is reported that Josh and Pete are coming back to write out this pitch that Chris Rock has had for the ninth entry in the Saw franchise. And if you ask me, I'm very much appreciative of that. I like the fact that we're going to have some consistency in between the last film and this next film. More on them later, probably more on them more so in the live stream because I know a lot of stuff that's been happening behind the scenes. I don't want to get into it here and I just want to talk about it, you know, without really having to put up a video and let it sit out there for a very long time. Anyway, let's get back to what they were talking about and what was reported on Deadline. Of course, if you want to read the article for yourself, it's going to be in the description section below, so go check that out. So Joe Drake, the chairman of Lionsgate's motion picture group, was quoted by Deadline saying, When Chris Rock came to us and described in chilling detail his fantastic vision that reimagines and spins off the world of the notorious Jigsaw killer, we were all in. He goes on to say, Saul is one of the highest grossing horror franchises of all time, and it's one of Lionsgate's most successful film series. This upcoming film will still be as mind-bending and intense as all the previous Saul films. Chris conceived this idea, and it will be completely reverential to the legacy of the material while reinvigorating the brand with his wit and creative vision and passion for this classic horror franchise. A lot to unpack there. Like I said, this news is just going to percolate through the next coming months. You know, before we know who's real all coming back, you know, in terms of the stars and what the story is going to be about before we get our very first look at it, all this other stuff. First and foremost, he doesn't say, even though Deadline is quick to say reimagining, a lot of people are being quick to say reboot. No one is saying reboot here. In fact, one of the biggest things, and we'll talk more about this in the live stream later tonight, but one of the biggest things 
that was really on Twisted Pictures plate, not so much Lionsgate, is that they want the main series storyline, the events and story and stuff that took place in between the eight films that have already been made to not be swept under the rug and treated like they never happened. That to me, and from what I've heard through the grapevine, is Twisted Pitcher's biggest issue with the Saw franchise. Yes, it's convoluted, but they know the fans love the story. They love everything about the Saw franchise, and they don't want to see it completely rebooted and reimagined every single time, just like they've done with the Halloween franchise and stuff that they've done with the Nightmare on Elm Street series and even the Friday the 13th franchise. Saul has a continuity. Saul has a story. Saul has characters that are not forgotten and are pivotal to the future of the series. You know, there's always something to be learned about the characters that we know and love. There's always some connection that we haven't seen before. And that's why this franchise, unlike any other horror franchise, is just as mind-bending and as intense as any other horror movie franchise. And in fact, probably one of the reasons so many people either dislike it or love it or just whatever. It is its own brand. It's its own thing. And that's one of the biggest selling points. I'm really hoping they don't just fully reboot the series and act like what Saul 4 through 8 didn't happen or Saul 3 through 8 didn't happen or something like that. Please, let's not go down the Halloween nothing happened and we're just rebooting everything. So that brings us to the current state of Hollywood filmmaking, especially for these horror franchises. One of the things they're focusing on with this Deadline article is that Chris Rock is an avid Saul fan. He has been since the very first film. He says, I've been a fan of Saul since the first film in 2004. I'm excited by the opportunity to take this to a really intense and twisted place. And the producers of this series, Mark Berg and Oren Kulis, even went on to say Chris wants to put his own spin on the Saw franchise in the way that Eddie Murphy put a completely fresh perspective on buddy cop films with 48 Hours. This new Saw film is going to be an event film in the making for horror fans. It will have all the twists and turns and hardcore layers that our fans expect directed by one of the masters of the craft, Darren Lynn Bowsman. We can't wait to get started. So, as I said in my last video about the Saw franchise, I was aware, I have been aware for a very long time, probably since February, that Darren Lynn Bowsman was coming back. Of course, I had no idea that Chris Rock was going to be the person reinventing the franchise. That kind of came out of left field, at least in my little circles or people who were aware of what was going on. Of course, like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about this in the live stream tonight, about what I knew was going on and what happened behind the scenes and what really kind of took place. Because honestly, the Chris Rock stuff really kind of irks me. Like, I'm not sure what to think about it right now. And I feel like there's just so much more to be said that I can't really fit in this video or it's going to be way too long. Anyway, what's really interesting about this to me is that the producers of the franchise haven't really looked at this or at least sold it in the way that they've talked about the series in the past. Obviously, the Saw franchise is known for being torture porn or just really intense, brutal death scenes that serve as the horror aspect of the franchise. But at the same time, a lot of people, especially the people who know about the series, consider it more of a horror thriller, more so on the thriller lines, waiting for the twist ending and trying to put together the pieces of the story. I love the idea that they're pitching this now as hardcore layers that the fans come to expect. Whether or not that means traps or one thing or another, I cannot say for sure. In fact, just considering the way that Mark Berg has talked about this franchise in the past, that to me is incredibly hopeful. In fact, it makes it seem like they're going to go back to story-driven narratives like the first Saw films, like 1, 2, and 3, instead of focusing so hard on the traps, which is kind of what they did with 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, especially 7. I, I really hope that that's what we're hearing here. And that's what they're really pointing out. In fact, I also really like the idea that they mentioned Eddie Murphy and his reinvention of the buddy cops thing for 48 hours. Because it feels like, as Deadline even points out in the article, the easiest explanation as to what's going on here is that Bloomhouse and Miramax recently like really reap the rewards of having a comedy duo come in and reinvent the Halloween franchise and bring back a lot of the core elements that made fans excited for that nostalgia boost that really played into the success of Halloween 2018. And I'm not entirely sure that worked. In fact, I feel like this is something that's really going to start plaguing or maybe, I don't know, it depends on what your thoughts are here. 
because we got on one hand we got Danny McBride and David Gordon Green kind of shepherding the future of the Halloween franchise. There's been reports that LeBron James is going to be producing and trying to get the next Friday the 13th movie off the ground and now we have Chris Rock coming in out of nowhere to reimagine the Saul franchise whether whether or not that means some kind of reboot or something that lives in the first 8 movies world. I mean, I really hope it really lives in the first 8 movies world. And, and, you know, before I I get off of here, because I've really covered a lot of what we can expect or what we've really learned about this in the last couple days, a lot of people also have been gravitating towards this idea that James Wan and Lee Whannell are coming back to executive produce the film. But they've been kind of involved, not really, but they've been at least by name mentioned because of their, you know, they're the original creators of the franchise with all of the films, every single one of them. I mean, I'm, it doesn't really say here, and I would have a hard time looking at this and thinking that either Lee Winnell or James Wan is going to have enough time to put any real effort into this reboot or this reimagining of their first series. I really would hope so. I feel like if they want to drive fan nostalgia, they want to drive success, both those people have such name recognition these days that they're going to be the shepherds of their own movie universes. I mean, James Wan with the Conjuring universe and Lee Whannell is taking over the Invisible Man for Universal, which was going to be the Dark Universe. It might still be. We're not really sure. I mean, obviously, these guys will bring a lot of weight to this franchise, this series, and hopefully, you know, they want to come back in a major way. But I wouldn't take too much stock in their names being mentioned in any article because they have been involved, or at least a little bit by name or just reference, from the beginning, ever since the beginning, and and throughout the entire thing. I mean, because they created it. They get residuals. They get, you know, paychecks for everything that they do. But as Lee Winnell said when he was promoting Upgrade, he saw all the advertisements, he saw everything related to Jigsaw, and he's like, well, you know, that was my baby, it grew up, it went to college, and now it's just living on its own, you know, like, I have no involvement with it, and I really can't dictate what's happening or where it's going, so until we hear more on that, and I really hope we do, I'm just going to take this as Chris Rock is coming in, he's going to produce this, Uh, Twisted Pictures, everyone involved with that group is going to produce it. We have confirmation that Pete and Josh are still on board. They're still writing this. Hopefully it's going to live in those first eight movies world and not be a complete reboot because I feel like that that would kill a lot of excitement for me, first and foremost. And then we also have Lionsgate, which has been talking about it for years. They want to take back horror. Like they used to, they got their name. They they built their entire brand off the back of horror. They used to rule it with Saul and Hostel and just everything that was going on in the early 2000s. They want back in the game and with reimagining, rebooting, and making Saul an event series again, it would be the in their best interest. I mean, obviously they want... Uh, the franchise to do as well as possible and whether or not that means rebooting the damn thing I'm not sure but we're going to talk about that in the live stream tonight I hope everyone is having a fantastic day what are your thoughts on this news maybe we'll talk about it later tell me in the comment section below hope everyone will go down subscribe for more Saul content discussions news updates and just everything in the future also hit that bell because YouTube's re- really weird guys like it will not update you it will not notify you unless you hit that bell with all of my videos and hopefully with this news and everything that's going to start trickling out there's going to be a lot to talk about when it comes to the Saul franchise for the first time in several years so I can't I'm excited about that I really can't wait and then also you know go down to the description section below hit that link and go follow me on Twitter where we can talk about the franchise or anything else hope everyone like I said is having a fantastic day it's been real